everybody, Charlie from Airplane Academy here. Hey, as a thank you to our first 100 subscribers, we actually have 127 this morning, so we'll include you 27. Uh, as a thank you, I want to go draw uh, something in the sky for you with our flight path. wanted to go out and, and, uh, and draw a 100. Now, this kind of led me down a rabbit hole into some mathematics and uh, flight planning that was actually pretty fun and I learned a lot, so I hope you'll stick around. Okay, so the interesting thing about planning out how to draw a 100 in the sky for all you 100 subscribers was that as I started to plan, you could do it the easy way, which is just opening for flight, kind of drawing a 100 with your flight path and, and just kind of winging it. Uh, I'm a little more OCD than that, and so I started to plan out how to actually maybe draw a perfect 100 in the sky that has all the proportions correctly and, and it's measured uh, and it's done right. And I'm going to attempt to do that today. Uh, in order to plan for that, it led me down kind of a rabbit hole of some math and planning, uh, and uh, I had a lot of fun kind of calculating it, but it should be a pretty fun flight. Thank you so much for all the first 100 subscribers. So uh, with that, let's go. Okay, so while I'm on the way out to draw the 100, this is a good time to explain the process behind it. I took it in four steps. Step one, first I needed to decide what kind of 100 shape I was going to do, and I decided on a straightforward 100 that would be written left to right, top to bottom, just like you'd write it on paper. The zeros would be formed by standard rate turns. Step two, next I had to decide how big the 100 would be so that I could start drawing the flight plan. To do this, I started by calculating how big the zeros would be, and I'd base the rest of the design off of that. This is where I started down a bit of a rabbit hole, so stay with me. First, I needed to calculate the radius of each circle, which I'll then use to size the one, as well as calculate the spacing between each digit. Since I'll be flying standard rate turns for the zeros, I know that the zero itself will take two minutes to draw, regardless of my speed, but my speed will change the size of that circle. We know that the circumference of a circle is two pi times the radius. The circumference is really a distance that I'm flying, even though it's a circle. I can solve for this distance by using velocity equals distance divided by time, which rearranged means distance equals velocity times time. I'll start by assuming velocity is 130 knots, since that's my typical cruise speed. And for time, I know that my turn will take two minutes, which is 2 sixtieths of an hour. Knots is per hour, and so my two minute turn needs to be in hours as well. Solve this formula and the distance, or circumference, of my standard rate turn at 130 knots is 4.33 nautical miles. I can use this distance as my circumference back in the original formula for radius, and that means a 130 knot standard rate turn would have a radius of approximately 0.7 miles. That's not a very nice round number, and so I redid the formula to solve for approximately 0.5 mile radius turns. The airspeed that gives me that is about 100 knots. Step three, now that I have the size of each circle, I can design the actual 100. The one is easy since the diameter of each circle is one nautical mile, which is two times the radius, which means that the one will be one mile long as well. To space the digits, there wasn't a right or wrong here, but I decided to try to space the digits half of the radius of the circle, so 0.25 nautical miles. This means that the space between the bottom of the one and middle of the first zero, where I'll begin my first standard rate turn, would be 0.25 nautical miles plus the radius of the circle, so 0.75 nautical miles in total. The space between the two zeros would be the radius of each circle plus the 0.25 nautical miles of spacing, so 1.25 nautical miles in total. Step four, all that's left is to determine what I'm going to use to align the 100 and how I'm going to measure the distances calculated in step three during the flight. For simplicity, I decided that it would run north, south, east, west. For the horizontal legs, I'm going to use the DME off of a VOR and a magnetic heading of 090. And the vertical leg, which only applies to the one, will be used as a DME off of an airport in my GPS and a 180 magnetic heading. I will fly approximately on the 090 radial off of the Maverick VOR, a major VOR in North Texas. I looked on the map and wanted to find a place without cities or airports underneath me so that hopefully I'd have the airspace to myself. I located such an area about 50 miles east on the 090 radial, immediately south of Greenville Majors Airport, which I can use as DME for my north-south leg. Now I just need to put pen to paper and sketch it out. Okay, so here's my flight plan. I'll fly east on the 090 radial to 49 DME, where I think I'll be about directly south of Greenville, at which point I'll start my southbound leg to a 180 heading and measure what DME from Greenville I start that turn and fly one mile. I think it'll be around 15 DME south of Greenville, which would make the southbound leg go until about 16 DME. After a one mile leg to draw the one, 
I'll do a steep turn to the left back to 090 heading, fly 0.75 nautical miles, which will be about 0.7 to 0.8 DME more off of Maverick, so just under 50 DME, and begin my standard rate turn to the left. After flying the standard rate turn, I'll go wings level on a 090 heading and fly for another 1.25 nautical miles, or about 51 DME off of Maverick, and then begin my left turn. Hopefully when I complete that turn and roll out on a 090 heading, I'll have a pretty good 100 drawn, but it's easy on paper, so let's see how it actually plays out. Well, in case our calculation was wrong, our starting point for the one, uh, we're just gonna see what DME south of Greenville that is, and we're just gonna make sure to take it one mile. Uh, our one will be approximately one mile, so it might not be starting at 15 south and then going to 16 south. Uh, based off the radial we're flying, it might be 17 or something. Uh, but either way, we'll use that as our starting point. A little bit slower. Luckily, we're only burning about nine gallons an hour. We can have hours of fun out here. There's 100 knots. And we're 44 DME. So five miles, we will start our right turn for the number one. Fingers crossed, guys. It'll be embarrassing if we don't get this right. 45 DME. Four miles to go. And we're 17 miles south of Greenville, so we'll make a note of it when we start our turn and fly a mile. Forty-eight DME one mile. And we're sixteen and a half miles south of Greenville. So we're gonna use that as our starting point and we will fly south to 17 miles south of Greenville to measure our number one. Half a mile, guys. Clear the area here. Don't show anything on four flight. I don't see anything visually. 49 miles, here we go. Should have done an intercept. That's okay, we'll give us that. A little steep turn to the right. To 180, and we're going to 17 and a half miles south. Okay, there's 180 on the heading. We're flying just to 17 and a half miles. It's going to happen fast. And then we're turning back left. So traffic to zero nine or zero now. Zero nine or zero, and we're going to fly point eight DME. We start our standard rate turn. Wow, this is going to be a very small 100. Okay, begin our left turn, standard rate, all the way back to zero nine or zero. Still not showing any wind up here, so we'll see. Still don't see any traffic. We're halfway through our standard rate turn. Take 270, now back to 090. And once we get back to 090, we got to fly, oh, about 1.3 or so DME off of Maverick before we start our next turn. Keep the spacing right. Get 90 degrees to go. So far, looking okay. Once we're back at 0, 090, 0, that'll start our 1.2-ish DME. Okay, 0, 090. 0. 1.2, so we'll take it to 51.2. 
52.2, correction, DME. Half a mile, we'll start our second left turn. I don't know if that's going to be enough, guys. We'll see. Trust the math. Here we go. Start our left turn. I don't know how the 100 is going to look. The 10 looks okay. But this isn't for 10 subscribers. This is for 100 subscribers. Ooh, getting nervous, guys. Looks okay so far. Heading 180. Got 90 degrees more to go. Finish this circle. Finish our sky riding. One day, we'll start with smoke on. But you can't do that in 182. Just be a poser. Never want to be that guy, you know? Hey guys, coming around here to 090. That first circle looked a little better than the second one. Okay, there's 090. Let's zoom in and see how we did. Not too bad. I think we might have had a little bit of a win there uh, from the south on our second circle, which made the bottom end a little bit shorter. But that's not bad for civilian math. Well, we hope to have a lot more than 100 subscribers, so uh, why don't we do like an ellipses here or something off of this. It'd be 100, maybe 100 dot dot dot. Clear left, y'all. Little steep turns and ellipses here. Woo! Feel the G's, man. Oh, we gotta do three of these. Here we go. Keep it coordinated. Nothing like pulling two G's in the morning. They help you wake up a little bit. Alright. Ellipses have three. So we gotta do one more. Okay, here we go. Keep it coordinated and hold your altitude. Woo! Traffic, one o'clock, two miles. 1,100 feet above. Okay, we're going to call out for traffic. This is bad timing. We are 1,000 feet above us. I was planning on making my little outro speech here, but we have traffic to deal with. In sight. Okay, now I can talk. Okay, not bad for uh, civilian math. You be the judge of it. Looks like we had a little bit of wind from the south during that, which uh, kind of compressed some of our circles there and also... Uh, even though we were flying 090, it was kind of pushing our flight path up to the north a little bit. Um, and so, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with that. Not too bad for uh, the first time doing it. We've got some traffic here on the right we're going to we're gonna avoid. But uh, anyways, fun flight, uh, fun to incorporate some math and some real world calculations into aviation. Uh, I got to go land and get some gas and get home. Uh, so my wife's not mad at me for just drawing 100s and circles in the sky all day. So, hey, I hope you'll subscribe to this channel. We're going to be putting out a whole lot more content, hopefully weekly. And, uh, yeah, we can't wait to see you guys along the journey. Leave me a comment down below. How would you have done this exercise? How could we have improved it? And uh, I'd love to talk to you in the comment section. Go ahead and hit subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next video.